Today we're back at Donnie's. This has been a multi-visit project. He wanted to level almost his entire yard. Our first visit came back in April. He had a pile of dirt and rock here that needed to be removed. Tim used a new 4-in-1 bucket for that part of the project. We came back a second time to remove a lot of pea gravel where they had had a swing set in years past. Today we're back to level and seed the yard. We bought the Ventrac with the power rake, power bucket, and the cedar aerator. We were here for about six hours on this part of the project. We would be honored if you'd subscribe to our channel and hit that like button while you're at it. What you see on the left half of your screen there is how we left it the day that Zach was along with us. It was still muddy then and so that was about the best I could do with the loader bucket. We had even more rain after that, so it's been several weeks since we've been here. Now that it's dry, it's pretty amazing to me what this power rake is doing to it in just one trip over. I spent probably 30 minutes on this area, just going back and forth and some different angles. I lowered the gauge wheels over time so that it didn't cut as aggressively and ended up with a pretty good result, at least in my opinion. I'll be quiet here for a minute or so and let you watch and listen to this come together. I think that looks pretty good. That power rake is the gem dandy tool for leveling. Well, the next step of the project's a little more challenging. We've got a hump of dirt here, probably eight, eight inches high, six to eight inches high. We need to get this to drain. There's a, there's a pool right behind the camera. There's this patio over here and all the water's running toward it. So we gotta get this pile of dirt out of here. We've actually got a spot for it in the front yard, so that's fine. Uh, but we need to get this so that this is draining that direction, right out there. Looks like there's a pile of dirt over here as well, so I believe there's plenty of soil. Now we just have to see what we can tear up. I see a lot of downspouts. Hey, Donnie, we got a lot of stuff we can tear up in here. We did yeah. find your fiber though. We'll see what we can do here. We talked a little about trying to save the sod, but we soon realized that it really wasn't going to be cost effective will be reseeding a lot anyway, so this little bit more won't really cost much. The power rake didn't have any issue with that sod. It went right through it. Now I'm still not an expert with the power rake, but I'm getting better at it. It's amazing what you can do with this thing. You can get a power rake with the same functionality for a compact or even a subcompact tractor. However, for some reason they're incredibly expensive. I'm not really sure why. Of course, the most common host for a power rake is a skid steer or a compact track loader. I'm not opposed to a skid steer or compact track loader, but they're a lot more expensive than any of the equipment we show here, and they're not very gentle on the yard. Anyway, in just a few minutes, I've shaved several inches off of that hump. I chose to use the power bucket again so that I didn't have to take two tractors. We've all noticed the tire squatting when we use the power bucket. I later checked and I had 11 PSI in each tire. After this project, I raised it to 15 PSI. I just couldn't stand to see them squat.
What I was wanting to make sure is that we don't end up with a slope toward the house. Okay, I'll dump this one right here then. Where yeah. I am? Or do you want me to do something different? You're the one shoveling. Right? Um, probably maybe uh, two feet further up. Forward. Forward. Okay. We specialize in these types of projects where we can help a customer who wants to do part of the work themselves. This ends up saving them lots of money. The gate opening on this side of the house wasn't big enough for Vinny or Johnny. So Dim had to drive around the house each time he wanted to move dirt from one side to the other. Yeah, that's right, and it was a pretty tight fit up through here, too. We're around this window well right now, and we want to make sure that we get drainage going away from the window well. Now, Donnie was digging here with a shovel, not with our machinery, and he found his fiber. Found. He didn't break it. I'm kind of wishing he'd have broke it myself because if he'd have broke it, we'd just rip it out and then we wouldn't have any worries the rest of the morning. Maybe that's not the best way to look at it? No, I don't think so. Okay. So we're going to uh, try to add some soil in here. Our, our, our challenge is we need to get the water running away from this house um, and away from this window well. And uh, so I'm going to show Donnie how to read this level a little bit and then I'm going to go back to hauling dirt. The way this thing works is it just has a horizontal beam. I mean, it's sort of invisible, right? right? And the only thing we're doing is determining, you know, where is that beam. So I've set this thing right on the window well. This bubble indicates your vertical, right? There you are. You're okay, when you have a solid tone, that means you're, you're at, the same, level at the same level. Now, that doesn't prove anything, right? That just says we're consistent. So that means we could move to some other point and it'll tell us whether we need to move the stick up or down to be at that same level. So we hold that like that, we can see on the ground that we're a, that spot is about an inch lower than, than this spot. Which isn't bad because we want it running. We want it running that way. So we can look at this one and it's saying that it's, it's higher here, right? So the only thing you can do is lean it backwards. Well, that means we've got a hump here. So that's that's all this thing tells you is relative to the point that we that we chose. Okay, and then you can use this to say, hey, I I need to slope it off. So I think I'll go back to hauling dirt, and maybe you can put Kathy on the stick because you know, Kathy, we haven't introduced you on our channel. I don't think this is our third trip here. Yes. yes. So far, I see Kathy as the detailed person that's really concerned about getting this slope just perfectly, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit, yes. But so, I feel like I'm in the way all the time. Well, this can be <laughs> your job. A great job. And that way you can tell Don what to do. Say, hey, a little here, a little here, a little there. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get this, oh, we don't even have to get it that close, guys. I'll actually come in with the the rake there, power rake, and, and run this back and forth. So we're really not to any detail yet. Just, I'm afraid our services may have to include marriage counseling by the end of the day. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys get to arguing, we're leaving. <laughs> so let's hit okay. this to see where that is relative to. All the way to the ground? All the way to the ground. So where does that say? Is it high or low? Sometimes Vinny's articulated steering makes it a bit difficult in a tight place, especially if you have a rear attachment. That's my challenge here. I'm about to hit the level with the bucket on the backside.
Maybe get it loose enough you can sculpt it from there? I think so. I think so. There's an adjustment on these Ventrax called weight transfer. I think I've finally mastered its usage. When the attachment's in the float position, it determines whether the attachment carries the weight or the front axle carries the weight. In this case, I wanted quite a lot of down pressure on the power rake so that it would dig aggressively. So I transferred the weight to the attachment. In other scenarios, you want the attachment to float lightly and the front axle to carry a lot of weight for better traction and steering control. Think of a mowing type application. So another name for this feature might be adjustable float. It can float light on the attachment or it can float heavy on the attachment. Would be nice to have a feature like this on a compact tractor loader. That might make it easier to float on top of a crushed stone driveway, for example. Of course, for that problem, we do have the edge tamers. Anyway, the weight transfer feature is unique to the Ventrac. I had never seen anything like this for a compact tractor or even a larger tractor, so I guess that's why it took me a while to really understand how to use it. And then where is it to the... If you watched the first and second episodes, you saw that I made some ruts from here on into the backyard. We'll repair those today, too. I'll just keep shaving a little bit at a time until we get this sloped away from the house. At this point, I could tell by eye what needed to be done. Once we got closer to the desired slope, we brought the level around and set it up and then we were able to perfect it. It's looking good. Yeah, there's a high spot right here. I'm curious. Got the same problem here on the other side of the patio. We'll take off enough here so that the water will drain away from the patio, not toward it. Now, if I didn't have the Ventrac and the power rake, I would have used Johnny and the tiller to solve this problem. We would have got it done, but not nearly as fast. And in fact, it was still a little bit wet to till, 
so I probably would have had to wait it another day or two. And given that it rained the next day, that day or two would have turned into a week or two. So I hate to say it, but I'm getting kind of spoiled by this power rake. Not only is it more forgiving in wet soil conditions, it's also more forgiving of rocks and other mm, challenges in the soil. It's also easier to do detailed leveling and grading work with it. In this first pass, I kind of till it an inch or so deep. In subsequent passes, I'm able to pull that extra soil backwards with me. We're using this Berenbrug Turf Saver RTF on the advice of our friend David Christie, who does this kind of stuff for a living and has done for years. So we planted it in front of our Carmel house and it looks really good. Unfortunately, that's for the new folks that live there. Yeah. The little bit in our side yard sprouted really good, didn't yes. it? Yes. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch because I'm driving Vinny. This is a 50 pound bag. And it cost us about $125. I fill them fuller once they get the bag small enough it's easier to handle. <laughs> I don't know if I can get the whole bag in there or not. Not, not really like sure it. if I really want the whole bag in there. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a little too much. Well, it's sort of like the milk carton. You think it's all out. Oh. And then you dump one last little bit and you realize, uh-oh. Oh, you think that's going to help? It does. Look at that. I can clearly press it down. Go fast, it's sprinkling. It is starting to rain. Surprise, surprise. Well, no rain. the radar didn't show any and the forecast didn't show any. Oh, right. Well, I can't really say that we're on time because it has taken a long time due to the rain. But we are under budget. Yes. I think uh, it came in a little cheaper than what we anticipated. It, yeah. With that rig we had today, it really, that was you know, awesome. it, did, it did the job. So uh, we've got your backyard level. 
We've got one side yard level. We've got another side with just a little slope to let it drain off. We've got the, we even did some work in the front yard. Mm -hmm. Donnie and Kathy, we really appreciate. Yeah. Thanks, oh, thank you. We appreciate you waiting out the rain with us. Yeah. This was amazing. I believe it's been 60 days or more since uh, we started this project. We just couldn't get out. Kathy, you're, you're pretty good with that laser level stick. May have to hire you. I think I've got it down. <laughs> We, we really do thank you, and thank you for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Well, it's sort of like the milk carton. You think it's all out, and then you dump one last little bit, and you realize, uh-oh. Here you go. Thanks. How come I always get your trash? Well, that's a good question. Well, this sidewalk here is going to have a good yeah. thick coat.